So right now we are going to go through my top seven most blatant signs that she is damaged goods. The girl that you just met, the girl you're about to get into an LTR with, or God forbid, the girl that you're about to marry. Okay, we're gonna go through my top seven signs to determine whether or not she is damaged goods. And the way we define the DG on this channel is generally what the DG is, is a female who is over the age of 30 years old, is still single, still unmarried, and usually a single mom, spend her 20s riding the carousel, all of which we're going to go through in tonight's coaching video. So let's just jump right into this. So the first sign, the first blatant sign that she is damaged goods is exactly what we we're just talking about. She just spent her entire 20s, her entire youth, the peak of her sexual marketplace value, not out there trying to lock down a high value guy, not out there trying to find the guy that she is going to marry, have kids with, have a family with. Hey, okay, no. Instead, she spent her 20s riding the carousel, sleeping with dozens and dozens, sometimes even hundreds of random men. Guys she met at venues, guys she met at happy hour, guys she met while bar hopping, guys she met while she was on a girl's trip at Cabo. She basically just spent her entire 20s riding the carousel, sleeping around with strangers. And there's been plenty of signs to back this up. Anytime a guy ejaculates in her and it doesn't even have to be in her vagina it could be in her mouth uh, it could like be on her face and it could go inside her ear believe it or not right that sperm of his stays in her body okay attaches itself to her body i've even heard stories of sperm attaching itself um on the inner parts of her her um her eyes like her eyelid like her her yeah, underneath her eyelids it's insane uh but the sperm pretty much stays with her from these random men uh for the remainder of her life okay for the remainder of her life so talk about the village bicycle so that is the first sign that the chick is damaged goods is she spent her 20s not trying to date and lock down a high value guy but instead kicking nice guys in the balls kicking high value guys in the balls why so she could date the alpha chats, she could ride the carousel, she could you know, sleep with men like a salad bar, just have her variety, her pick of different men. And you know what? It's all fun and games to her until she turns 30, right? That's usually the when these girls have an epiphany, right? It's like an awakening for them, like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? What did I just do? I need to find a nice guy because now she's like just spent a whole decade of her youth, like basically the last decade of her youth, sleeping with irresponsible guys, investing in guys who really had no interest in her beyond sex. And now she's finally become aware of that. And the problem is now she no longer has the physical attractiveness and the sexual marketplace value that she did five, 10 years earlier. But she still expects those quality, those level of guys to still be attracted to her. When she's starting to realize that she can't get those guys to settle down, that all they want her for is sex, that's when she starts looking for the beta provision, or a guy like yourself who can provide not only financial stability, but relationship stability, where you're gonna come home at night, you're not going to ghost her, you're gonna return her texts on time, you're gonna show up on time for your dates, right? You're not gonna be so flaky and irresponsible, you're gonna actually have a job and not be getting fired every week. Now she wants that guy. Now that her physical attractiveness and her sexual marketplace value has declined dramatically. The second sign that she is the DG, damaged goods, is that now that she is beyond her 20s and she's now in her 30s, sometimes even her 40s and 50s, uh, she is now relegated to using dating apps to pump up her social value, mostly in her head, right? That's why you have a lot of these chicks over 30 going, I'm still hot, oh, I'm still a 10, I'm still a dime piece, because they have so many beta orbiters, basically these lower tier, low value males who are relegated to 
um, using online porn for intimacy, just pumping up her head, right? Liking all of her photos, all of her selfies, dropping comments, talking about, oh, you still got it, girl. Ooh, you still hot. So these girls have a delusional sense of social value. They think that their SMV is still high when realistically it's not, okay? It's just not there anymore. Fortunately or unfortunately, most of their social value is tied to their physical attractiveness, to their youth and fertility, okay? Remember that, youth and fertility. And those are things that evaporate after the age, really after the age of 25. Most people in the red pill manosphere or the manosphere period will tell you that a girl peaks at 25 and after 25, it's all downhill from there. She loses uh, her youth and fertility, her physical attractiveness. That is usually when she peaks at 25 and then it's downhill from there. These girls basically after 30, they are now relegated to dating apps, basically whoring themselves out on these dating apps where they begin using these very, very trick angles where they like take the photo from up here. So they look, you know, like 10 pounds or 20 pounds or 30 pounds thinner. They'll never take the photo from down here, right? Down below. It'll always be like some sky high angle or they'll try to use some trick angle where it's like only of their eyeball so you can't really see anything else definitely no full body shots right and if they do have full body shot it's all like all blurry or some shit like that or super far away you can't even see so there's some very very tricky and manipulative angles that they could use on these dating apps to make you think that they still have high SMV value, but really all you have to do is look at her age and even that they lie about, right? If they're 30, they're not going to put that they're 30. They're going to be like, oh, I'm 25. If they're 40, they're not going to put their 40. They're going to be like, I'm 29. If they're 50, they're not going to put their 50. They're going to be like, I'm 39, right? They're always going to go much younger. They are relegated to using these dating apps to continue fooling men into believing that they are still as hot as they were back in their 20s. Uh, this is why I am against dating apps. I don't use them. I mean, just beyond the fact that these girls really manipulate their profiles, they manipulate their photos. For me, it's just a tremendous waste of time to communicate with somebody back and forth. You don't know the person. You don't know if there's any chemistry or connection there yet. You really don't know that until you see the person in person, right? In real life. And this is why I, I'm all for cold approach. I, I don't do dating apps. I've said this before over and over. I am a hardcore, old school, cold approach pickup artist. When I see a cute girl, I don't care if I'm in line at the bank. I don't care if I'm in line at a Target or even a 7-Eleven. I've done this at 7-Eleven. If I see a cute girl, uh, I'm just going to start talking to her. At least just gauge. Just gauge if there's any type of connection there. Usually if there's something there, then I will plow forward with some material. I will start doing what's called multiple threading where I will open multiple lines of uh, conversation with the girl so I can keep the conversation going. And then I will start building attraction, then I'll build comfort and rapport, and then I'll close the girl if it's worth it. But I have to know before all that happens, is there even a connection between us? And usually you could feel that instantly once you start talking to somebody, right? Male or female, male or female. You might've just seen like a dude, like you just happen to strike a conversation with some guy, like randomly, like say you're at the gym or something. And then guy starts talking and then instantly, you know, like oh, this guy's actually kind of cool. We should hang out. I, I could get along with this guy. Or you might feel the opposite, like instantly. Wow, this guy's kind of a dick. This guy's like something's wrong with him. There's something off about him. And then, you know, instantly like, ah, I'm probably not going to talk to this guy again. He looked cool, but he's not. That is why I don't use dating apps personally. I just like meeting these girls in real life because I know right then and there if it is even worth my the next 20 minutes of my life to work any game on her. And if it's not, I don't feel a connection. I'm just like, all right, well, it's nice talking to you. Have a nice night. Done. There's none of this texting back and forth for, you know, days on end. And then we figure out a place to meet that's safe for both of us. Yeah, No, I, I don't do that. And the third blatant sign that she's damaged goods and we kind of touched upon this already but i'll touch upon it really quickly is the fact that she still expects high value men to save her okay she still has a, a delusional level of her real real life smv versus her online smv and again we already touched upon this most of these girls just have so many of these thirsty betas constantly just dming her like inflating her ego, validating her because these guys are so hard up because they don't get laid themselves. But instead of her seeing these guys for what they are, for the low value males that they are, 
she just deludes herself into thinking that she's still got it. And because of that, she's like, oh, I could kick all these beta orbers in the ball. I deserve the alpha Chad still. I should still get the alpha Chad. I'm just as hot as that 18 year old in the club. Even though I'm 45, why can't I get the alpha Chad? You know, so a lot of these girls are very delusional of their SMV and you know who I blame for that is the thirsty beta orbiters of the world, right? But this is just yet another sign that she is damaged goods. The fourth sign that she is the DG is she uses phrases like, I've had my fun. I've had my fun. Now I'm ready to settle down. Right? These are the type of phrases that a chick who is the DG will commonly use. I've had my fun. Or, where have all the good men gone? Where are all the good men these days? You know, you know right away, like the only type of girl who's going to ever ask, where have all the good men gone, is generally a chick who's over 30, rode the carousel, banged all those, like, <laughs> all those high value alpha chads, never settled for any of them, and now here she is, now damaged goods, like still looking for the, uh, the Chad to save her, right? And again, we just touched upon this, how these girls still have that delusional level of entitlement thinking they, they deserve these high value alpha Chads that they were getting in their twenties, but now they're no longer in their twenties. So what happened to those alpha Chads? Where have all those good guys gone? They're dating females who are 10 years younger than you. That's where those guys have gone. And you know, I'm not trying to be mean when I say this, I'm just trying to be real. Cause that's what this coaching video is about, right? Girls who are the DG will commonly say it's where have all the good guys gone? Oh, I've had my fun. I've had my fun. Now I'm ready for you. Uh, that's just astonishing. Whenever a girl says that, by the way, I've had my fun. Basically she's admitting I've had my fun. I've banged every alpha Chad I possibly could. And you know what? Now I'm ready for you. Now I'm ready for you. Even though I totally ignored you back in my twenties, you were invisible to me. I flaked on you. Every time you asked me out, I didn't show up. Remember that? I stood you up. How many times did I stand you up? I told you, yep, be ready. Meet me there at 10 o'clock. And I never showed up, right? Never returned your calls, never responded to your texts. But you know what? I've had my fun. I'm done with that. I'm ready for you. Oh, I can't say that. It drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. Especially these party girls. A lot of party girls will say some shit like that. I've had my fun. These chicks who are basically nightclub celebrities, they spent their 20s clubbing, partying, whoring themselves. These are the girls that'll be like, I've had my fun. Now I'm ready for you. You ready for me? I'm ready for you. Why? Because now they're over 30. Now they can't get those guys anymore. Now they have to settle for what they can get. It's so weird because as much as these chicks have that mindset, they also still have this insane self-belief that they should be entitled to those chads, those high value chads that they were getting in their early 20s. It's just mind boggling, but hey, you don't call them damaged goods for nothing, right? Don't call them damaged goods for nothing. That is the fourth sign that she's damaged goods. She uses those type of DG phrases that only a damaged girl would use. A lot of times too, they'll say, say things like, just like blatantly honest. They'll be like, I'm done dating bad boys. No more bad boys. I'm done dating bad men. Like she'll literally tell you that. I'm done dating the bad boys. What is she trying to tell you? It's like those guys have just had taken advantage of her, her entire life where now she's like, I'm over it. I want a good guy. Just like you, just like you. Fifth sign, she's damaged goods is she secretly sabotages the relationships of female friends, female family members, female coworkers, you name it. A girl who is over 30, still single, unmarried, is generally a girl who is not very happy. All right, and I'm not saying this is my own personal bias. I'm saying this statistically, these girls are not happy. They're not feeling fulfilled in life. They are feeling like they missed the boat, that they should have gotten married earlier. And what a lot of these girls do, instead of trying to go out there and scrounge up the highest value man that they can, focus on their own selves, their own lives, what do they do? They turn their anger and their resentment towards their girlfriends, their female family members, their female coworkers, and they destroy their relationships. Okay, any of those girls that they see that are in happy relationships with guys, they will come along 
like a cuckoo and try to destroy their eggs, right? They will try to destroy their seeds because they're miserable. And as you know, misery loves company, just like the old saying goes. But she will try to get those girlfriends of hers, those female family members or those female co-workers to start acting out in their relationships. She will start encouraging those girls. Let's have a girls night out this weekend. Leave your men at home. We're going to the clubs. You can't say no. We're going to the clubs. We're partying this weekend. We're drinking. We're celebrating. It's like she just starts becoming a very, very bad influence on those girls. And she, again, she encourages them to act out to rebel against their men go clubbing to go partying to go take these girls trips to start going out to happy hour right she will like literally start encouraging them to do this because she is not happy herself right and this has happened to not only one of my girlfriends but a few of them right i talked about my chick from 2006 her auntie did this to her her auntie was like in her late 40s Right, my girl was in her mid twenties and we were happy. And then her auntie came to visit for like maybe a week. That entire week, she's like trying to encourage her to go clubbing. Oh, leave Matt at home. Let's go here. Let's go visit my ex-boyfriend. He has a guy friend. It's like, what the fuck is she doing? Why is she dragging you to this shit? I was pissed. I was pissed. I'm like, dude, this chick is not happy with herself. So she's trying to drag you down. And I even called her auntie out. I was like, hey, hey, knock it off, knock it off. You know, just because you ain't got no man, don't try to sabotage her. And I was blue pill back then, and I still knew what she was doing. And this is very common. It's not just her. I mean, a lot of these chicks who are the DG, over 30, unmarried, still single, don't have a family of their own, instead of focusing on themselves and trying to just get any high-value guy or even any low-value guy they can to lock that guy down, nope, they will just turn on their girlfriends, turn around, try to, like, be a... a a wolf in sheep's clothing, be like, oh, I'm your girlfriend, I'm your bestie. I got your best interest at heart, girl. Oh, you know, besties for life. I'm always looking out for you. Don't trust these men, when really she's the one you shouldn't trust. She's trying to destroy your relationship. You're happy with your man. And she wants to get you to rebel. She wants to get you to act out. She wants to take you on a girl's trip. She wants to take you to like a male strip club. Right? She wants to take you clubbing where you can meet other dudes. She wants to take you to happy hour. She wants to take you bar hopping. What kind of friend is this? Right? These are the things that only a DG would do. Damaged female. Over 30. Still single. Unmarried. Unhappy. Resentful. That's what she'll do. She'll try to destroy the relationships of the females in her own life. Okay? Sad. Sad. All right. The sixth sign that... The chick is damaged goods and this is an easy one is she's a single mother she's a single mother okay worse than that she's got multiple kids from multiple different fathers right she's a single mother multiple kids multiple different fathers and i've said this too beating a dead horse with my ex from 2006 she had me high value guy right i became successful financially successful she could have stayed with me we could have done this um nope left me because of her auntie thanks to her auntie's encouragement Oh, you can do better, girl. You can do better than Matt. You can do better than him. Oh, go out with me. Go clubbing. There's so many guys out there. So many guys. So many guys. You're so beautiful. So many guys will want you. That's what she was feeding her. And she was beautiful, to her credit. So many guys will want you. You don't need to stay with him. Don't need to put up with Matt's crap. Come with me. We're going to take this trip. We're going to go clubbing. We're going to go bar hopping. We're going to go here. Oh, my ex-boyfriend's friend. He's so good looking. Oh, you should meet him too. Started doing that shit. Fast forward. 15 years later, what happened? I became successful. What happened to her? She became a single mom. She has two kids from two different fathers. Think she could ever lock down a guy like me again or a high value guy? No, she can't. She's not, she can't lock down no successful business owner or any guy with a successful career or just any guy who's high value. Who's going to want a girl with two kids from two fathers? Only the guy who would settle for that is a low value guy, got no money, got no life, got nothing going on. And he has no choice but to settle for that. I don't need to settle for that. I could get young hotties. I could get girls in their 20s. I could get single girls, models. I prove it all the time. I do it all the time. I do game all the time. I mean, it's not hard. I have a six-girl dating rotation. I don't need to settle for a single mom. I don't need to settle for a girl with multiple kids from multiple fathers. Only low-value guys need to do that. Guys who have no life, no future. The girls who, who do this are... I hate to say it, they're damaged goods, right? They screwed up their own lives because of their lack of 
judgment, their poor choices in life. That's what it was. Okay, because as I teach you guys, women are the gatekeepers of sex. It's not us. We're not the gatekeepers as men. They are. They choose who they want to open their legs for, who they want to get impregnated by. That's their choice. So if they make a bad decision, that is on them. That is on them. Like I've gotten some uh, single moms who've hated my comments, been like, oh, well, he left me. He was a drug abuser. He was an alcoholic. Whose fault was that, girl? Who chose him? You did. You are the gatekeeper to sex. You could have been like, no, dude, you're a druggie. You're an alcoholic. You're a loser. I'm not going to let you impregnate me. I'm not even going to have sex with you. I don't want nothing to do with you. But no, you did. And now you have a child from this guy that you're raising and taking care of yourself. So not only has the girl screwed up her life, but she's also screwed up the life of those kids. Because statistically, the lives of a, a child that comes from a single mother household, especially if he's a boy, is screwed right? Statistically, he is screwed. So now that she is a single mom, she only has really two options for men that she can date. It's either she gets a low value guy, no life, no job, no money, no career, just nothing really big going on. Or the guy with low social value, basically, you know, guy that no other like high value chick wants. That's the guy that she, she can get. Or uh, a single dad who's looking for like a Brady Bunch type arrangement where she's going to help raise his kids too that she is not biologically attached to. So those are her two options. Um, so yeah, chicks who become single mothers, they become the DG. Had you chosen wisely, had you been more patient, had you not listened to your sabotaging girlfriends, sabotaging coworkers or sabotaging family members or sabotaging auntie, you wouldn't have made such a poor decision. So you have to take responsibility for that, right? So that is the six blatant sign that she's damaged goods is she's a single mom, right? And you guys follow my channel. Uh, I forbid you from dating single mothers. I just, I just do. Even if you're a single dad, you don't need to date a single mom. I've taught you guys over and over that uh, unlike with men where there's a stigma against dating single moms, um, with females, they don't seem to care if you have a child, right? A, a lot of them don't mind being an instant mom, right? And you could lock down a high value, young, hot female to help raise your child. She'll do it. She won't care. But for guys, we care. We don't like that. We don't like raising another man's kid. We don't like taking over somebody else's, say, video game. We just don't like doing that stuff. We don't like eating somebody's uh, leftover hot dog. We want to get our own hot dog. That is the sixth sign, sixth blatant sign that she's damaged goods. And the uh, seventh and final sign that she's damaged goods is she spends her days, her time, effort, and energy hating and shaming on videos like this that are calling her out for her bad decisions in life, for her lack of judgment in life, for her poor choices in life. And I get a lot of these girls do that. They will come in on the comment section. They'll attack me, um, you know, what I'm wearing, what I'm doing. They'll just do these insane personal character attacks, ad hominem attacks. They can't debate me on the topic. So they do the like seventh grade junior high playground shit thinking it's going to have any effect, right? When really it's like all you have to do is just look in the mirror and accept responsibility for your bad decisions and try to fix yourself. It's like instead they rather put that time and energy and effort towards hating on me, the content creator, like telling me that, oh, you're teaching the, the men this stuff. It's not good. It's like, what's not good? I'm warning men against d dating damaged females. I'm warning high value guys who are on their path and purpose, who are grinding, who are sacrificing to make a better lives for themselves, to not settle for a female who has ruined her life. I'm not going to participate in your, you know, in your conspiracy here to keep men down and ignorant and uninformed so you can continue making bad decisions and enabling other women like yourself who are continuing to make bad decisions and dumb decisions. Because the truth is I have a lot of females as well who follow my channel who are still young in their 20s and a lot of these chicks end up sending me thank you messages going, hey, 
thank you for that content. Thank you. I Nobody ever said this. Nobody even told me this. Not even my own dad told me this. And thank you so much. I, I feel so, so much more awake now, more aware. Like I could make better choices. I could make better decisions in my 20s. And I don't have to screw up. I don't have to waste my SMV. I didn't realize that after the age of 30 that you know, I'm not going to be able to attract the same level of guys. This is just not anything I've ever heard from anybody until I've watched your pickup channel, right? So I get a lot of these girls in their 20s thanking me. The only girls hating really is women over 30. The women that I'm describing, they're hating it because they're being triggered by content like this because it's describing them. It's describing who they are. It always baffles me too because I'm like, why are you on a men's dating channel? I mean, what are you doing here if you don't like it? I, why even be here? I understand the girls who come here like in their 20s who are supporting it because nobody taught them this either. They didn't realize that. A lot of them will say things too like, oh, I have a girlfriend just like you described. I have a family member or an auntie, a crazy auntie just like you described. And she's always trying to rip on my boyfriend and he's like so good to me. And you know, he's got a good job, he's in school. He wants to get a, his law degree and all this other stuff. And my auntie's like, no, no, you no, you should be with some other guy. If he's too successful, he'll just leave you, you know. And I, she, you know, so I have a lot of girls like tell me like, thank you for this content. Uh, because I'm only 20 right now, or I'm only 21, or I'm 19, and I didn't know this. And thank you, because now I can structure and strategize my 20s versus doing what all my dumb girlfriends are doing, which is just basically partying, getting drunk on the weekends, and going clubbing. I don't want to do that with my life. I never felt good about doing that. I, I kind of want to find a good guy, and I want to have a family. And so many of my friends are telling me that's wrong and this and that and they're like thank you so i get a lot of thank you messages from females as well especially you guys too especially you guys you didn't have this knowledge either you're like oh i just thought like if she was over 30 she just probably focused on her career and it's like yeah some girls do i mean even even some of the girls like who will hate on this I understand that because they're like, no, I didn't do no carousel. I didn't sleep around, mister. I ain't no single mom. I was just focused on trying to build my career. And it's and they tell me like, I didn't even want to get married. It's like, okay, great, that's your decision. But a lot of girls who become damaged goods, you have to understand that they were not working on their career, girl. They were not trying to uh, go up in the corporate ladder. Instead, they were trying to ride the carousel. They were trying to party it out. You know, they're exercising their blatant hypergamy. They're monkey branching from guy to guy throughout their 20s. And now that they're in their 30s and the ride is over, that's when they want you to come and save them. And I'm warning guys exactly what is going on so they can make the proper choice. I'm not telling guys what to do. I'm not telling you, hey, don't date these girls. I'm just telling you this is what you're getting yourself involved in. Right? I'm just laying out the facts. I'm laying out the facts. So those are my top seven blatant signs that she is damaged goods. And you can make your decision from there. Feel free to drop some comments below if you have anything to say. If you want to share your own story, I would love to hear it. So please feel free to comment below. And until next time, this is Matt Cross from The 33 Secrets signing out here from my garage. Got the DeLorean, the DMC behind me. So until next time, don't forget to smash that like button below. Also, hit that notification bell right next to it so you're notified whenever I release a brand new coaching video here on the YouTube. More importantly, guys, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a ton when you guys actually subscribe to my channel. Helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, okay? Tells YouTube that you want to see more of these coaching videos, okay? Because they don't like it. They don't like to promote this stuff, and they're not. Right, so I need your help. I need you to make sure you're subscribed to my channel and that way you'll know every time I upload a brand new coaching video here to the YouTube. And for you guys who want to support my work and all of this red pill, gold pill, and platinum pill content that I'm teaching you even further, the best way to do that is by jumping into my monthly online coaching program, Seven Months to Mastery, where I'm teaching guys just like you how to go out there and approach and close the youngest, hottest, and most beautiful looking women on the planet. I'm talking about eights, nines, and tens. Okay, the same exact type of women that myself and all of my coaching students all around the world are out there approaching and closing every single week. And I kid you not, we are making this happen every single week, no matter what virus is going on in the world, no matter what type of racial division is going on in the world, we are continuing to live our lives, make things happen, crush it, 
grind and I want you to do the same. Okay, I want you to do the same. And of course, this is the best way to support my work. So if you want to support my work and everything I'm teaching guys here, that's the best way to do it by jumping into seven months of mastery. And right now it's only a buck, one dollar for the entire first month of coaching lessons from me. And all you need to do to sign up is just click that link below in my description box. It will take you over to my website where you can get signed up right now. It just takes two seconds. So do that now and I will see you in my next coaching video.